Welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara O'Brien. The news this week, there have been numerous complaints about racism and bullying in the Big Brother house. Shilpa's relatives have received thousands of messages as they work in Channel 4's call centre in India. <laughs> Jade is now officially the most unpopular goody, breaking Bill Oddie's 30-year run. <laughs> America is sending an extra 21,000 soldiers to Iraq, but questions are being asked about the apparently random nature of their foreign policy. Last week, they bombed Mogadishu after George Bush sneezed during a briefing. <laughs> This week, England and Scotland celebrated 300 years of political unity. The relationship has been compared to a marriage. After so long together, the magic's gone out of it, and they're only staying together for the sake of the Welsh. <laughs> in one of the biggest opinion polls ever carried out in England, people were asked if they preferred to be called British or English. An overwhelming majority replied, Romanian. <laughs> The preserved skeleton of the whale that swam up the River Thames last year went on display this week. The whale's post-mortem established the cause of death as dehydration, muscle damage and kidney failure. Although Mohammed Al-Fayed insisted he was murdered by the royal family. <laughs> Joining me tonight are six of the country's top comedy performers. Andy Parsons, Mark Watson, Russell Howard and Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Ian Stone. Welcome to the show. Our first round is called Headliners. Here's a picture of David Beckham and his lovely wife, Victoria. But what does the DBPB stand for? Is it Desperate um... Bulimic's Pointless Boyfriend? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, does Beckham piss banknotes? <laughs> That would be a fantastic act. Of course, you'd need a question mark, really, yeah. but it's just a game. Yeah. Is, it, is, it, is it Dabbles behind Posh's back? Ooh. Or is he just didn't bother packing Brooklyn? <laughs> <laughs> is it something about a payday bonanza or something? I'd like to have a crack at this. Is it David Beckham's payday bonanza? <laughs> It's a good guess, but is no, it, it's not. It? It's, uh, David Beckham's pay bonanza. Hugh was the closest brother. Hugh, right. 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 Yes, it celebrates the former England captain's impending move to American club LA Galaxy. Beckham hopes to raise the profile of football in America as well as earning close to £130 million pounds over five years, or £70,000 a day. Um, are we all really happy for him? Yeah. yeah we've, all, we've, all, we've all done stuff for money. My, uh, my brother ate some dog food for 20 quid. <laughs> it's hardly a payday bonanza, though. It's <laughs> <laughs> it it not three, three years old. Yeah. What yeah. they're saying is that he only gets five million quid for playing football, and the rest is image rights and all the rest of it. And they're saying the reason he's getting most of the money is because he will appeal to the Hispanic market because he can speak Spanish. He can barely speak English. <laughs> <laughs> This, though, it just gives like old people an opportunity to wax lyrical about the old footballers. Like, my yeah. granddad was brilliant, like, and he always invents players. I'm sure of it. But he was there the other day, just kind of go, David Beckham. He's bloody. I tell you what, never as good as Will Flangleberry. Will Flangleberry. He was so good. He scored 81 goals in a game. So poor, he lived in a kettle. And he used to eat nothing but gravel, and he was still better than bloody Beckham. <laughs> Is, is, there element, is there an element that this entire story just proves once and for all that you, this country hates success? Exactly. This country you cannot, cannot handle somebody no, we, having a perfectly no, nice not, retirement not, gift of 130. We, we hate successful morons. <laughs> <laughs> no, we really like successful people who develop cures for diseases and stuff like that. That's great. So if the story was Stephen Hawking signs for LA Galaxy that for 130. <laughs> Because like really good players, like you know, Paul Scholes is probably going to end up fighting pigs for a living when he's old. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I, 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 what's that? What's that? <laughs> what's that? How is that possible? Yeah. He'll have, well, he'll have no money. Do you know what I mean? Or uh, why are we in the pressure just because Paul Scholes is quiet that he's frittered all his cash away on Finder's crispy on pancakes pig or something? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, he's, he's spent it all desperately trying to find a cure for gingerness. <laughs> There's not enough money in the world, it's, it's, called, it? it's, it's called Scolds' as Folly. This entire <laughs> research project here, which is just there to cure Scolds' as ginger. It's, 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 it's vulgar. It's not, just, it's not just a lot of money. It's 130, nearly 130 million. Plus, the, the season doesn't start in April, so until then he can claim unemployment benefit. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm not, so, I'm not jealous of all of Beckham's money. He has still got to listen to her singing in the bath. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I'm thinking, uh, I bet Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes are regretting say, come and stay. They weren't expecting five years, were they? Yeah. <laughs> uh, why, is, why is Tom Cruise befriending him? That's what we've got to ask ourselves. He wants to get him into why the would, why, well, why would someone who's a Scientologist, <laughs> who's in a religious cult, want to befriend a rich, gullible idiot? <laughs> We have to say that we don't know. Yeah. <laughs> we have to say that we don't know for legal reasons. <laughs> it, how, did, how, did he, how did he describe um, Tom Cruise during the week? A very short. wise man. Very short. No, it wasn't yeah. short. A very uh, wise man. Very wise man. Very <laughs> Apparently, though, Tom Cruise is level seven feetin for the Scientology Church. <laughs> and apparently, right, there's various levels, and All you right. get to level three, and you learn the big secret, which is apparently that 75 million years ago, an evil galactic warlord called Zenu got 13.5 trillion aliens from various different planets, brought them back to Earth, put them in volcanoes, vaporized them, and their radioactive beings now inhabit our souls. Can I do this? Now, this is two <laughs> things in this, right? <laughs> Firstly, right, two. imagine, right, having spent many years and a huge sum of your own wealth to find out that pile of horse shit. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and secondly, imagine Tom trying to explain that to David Beckham. Yeah. <laughs> I think um, Cruz just does it to fill his time because he's finished as an actor. Mission Impossible 3, what, the fact you can have it, Mission Impossible 3, suggests he can do these missions, really. <laughs> <laughs> really just mission quite tricky but he'll do it <laughs> was anybody worried about posh in this whole thing i mean yeah. the fact is posh is going to turn up in la and we've seen the women in la they're even thinner than her <laughs> well, she's going to turn up she's going to turn up at the airport and go gosh she's let herself go isn't she yeah. <laughs> she must be what six and a half stone fat cow <laughs> <laughs> On a slightly more serious note, what else has been going on across the pond what's been the big story in america uh, oh, yes. well there's a Bush, new isn't surge isn't there he, uh, george bush has decided to send in more troops to uh, to Iraq, because that's going to cure the problem. I'd like to bring you to Iraq, as if it's actually... <laughs> at what point was it actually being called something else? It's efficient. What Bush said in his statement, he said that these soldiers, 21,000 of them, will be sent to Iraq, and part of it will they be calling, to gain the trust of the Iraqi people, they will be calling door to door on the Iraqi <laughs> That's what we really? want. 21,000 troops doing trick or treat. <laughs> It's, it's like democracy with a gun, isn't it? It's just so they go, right, you can vote. Not for that one! <laughs> <laughs> That's the one you vote for! Yeah. It's, it's just a thing where, you know, the Americans, the Americans say that they're losing the battle for hearts and minds, but then you, you look at Iraq on the news and there seem to be hearts and minds all over the place. <laughs> the real trouble seems to be wiping the hearts and minds off the windshields. <laughs> Are there, any, are there any marketplaces in Baghdad that haven't been blown up? <laughs> That's got to be doubly galling, hasn't it, that you're living under constant mortar fire and it's really difficult to get fresh veg. <laughs> Obviously, with Saddam Hussein and when they hung him, and, and they, they should have just let him go for a laugh, I think. I think they should have let him out, gone off, what, he goes, Saddam. Do you think they should have put, they should have put the, the, the thing on his head? Yeah. And, and then, then shoved him out the door. him four times, <laughs> yeah, and, then, <laughs> and then pushed him out. <laughs> <laughs> Closer to home, what has Gordon Brown been doing this week? Uh, he's been, hasn't he been pretending that he's not Scottish? Yes, so he, he has. He's been made English yeah. Prime Minister. Yes. <laughs> that's never been a, in a nutshell, oh, that's yeah. exactly what he's been doing. He yeah. might as well just do a party political broadcast where he smashes a haggis to bits with a cricket bat. <laughs> <laughs> in terms of celebrating great days, what great days, of course, are we supposed to be the, celebrating? Uh, the Act 300 of the Union. Years, 300 years of the Act of Union. 300 yeah, years. And, and how is it being celebrated? So commemorative £2 coin. Oh, it is, yes. Which is funny, really, because it. Uh, if you try and spend Scottish money in this country, you may as well try and pay with a piece of cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Does well, it cost us really strange. English, what the English don't know is that for many years we have actually secretly been at war with England, and what you think are tramps are actually reconnaissance. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a lot of reports in. We've so far learned that London is awfully cold. <laughs> it was about on telly the other day. I was watching it, and uh, it was about having an English Parliament. And 60% uh, people said they wanted it, 30% didn't, 10% said they didn't know, which implied that 10% of people had rang up yeah, to kind of go, "Yep, no, don't know." <laughs> <laughs> 
was nice to have that my opinion matters. Thank you very much. You've got to feel sorry, then. <laughs> You've got to feel sorry for Gordon Brown. He's waited ten years for Tony Blair to piss off, and then, just as he's going to get Prime Minister, it seems that Scotland, in his own constituency, is going to piss off as well. That would be the funniest thing in the world if Tony Blair, as his last act, before you hand it over to Gordon Brown, released the Scots. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Signed out the union. And again, that round of points go to Russell, Mark, and Andy. <laughs> the next round is called Between the Lines. It features Hugh and Frankie. Would you make your way to the press pit? In this round, one of them takes on the role of a person in the news addressing the media while the other translates what they really mean. Frankie, you are mm. Prince Charles making a New Year address to the nation. Hugh, you will tell us what he really means. My loyal subjects. My whom is. <laughs> My bitches. <laughs> I'm proud to say that Harry will be serving in Iraq. I'm sure that he will find a useful role to play. Three miles behind the other troops, in a sealed titanium war bubble. <laughs> I do hope that he doesn't get shot. How will I break the news to his father? <laughs> Meanwhile, seems to have found a girl that he's in love with. So now he can marry someone else and keep her as his bit on the side. <laughs> Tabloids are desperate to get hold of saucy pictures of Kate. I've got some. <laughs> it was good to see Helen Mirren winning a Golden Globe. I thought she did a wonderful performance as my mother. I've been having some very confusing dreams. <laughs> <laughs> I took Camilla to India recently, and the locals who saw us were amazed. They thought, blimey, Diana's let herself go a bit. <laughs> Surely it is now time that Diana was laid to rest. After all, it's nearly ten years since we had her killed. My sons were both very upset at the time. He kept on asking why I smelt of brake fluid. <laughs> well done to Hugh and Frankie! <laughs> now we play a round called Spin on This. This game <laughs> involves Ian, Andy, Frankie and Russell. So if you can make your way to the performance area, please. This is our stand up challenge, our random news generator with a bank of topics. We spin the wheel, and when it stops, anyone can step forward and try to make us laugh with the subject it's landed on. Okay, here we go. Let's spin the wheel for the first topic. Okay, the first subject is street protesters. Can I have a volunteer to talk about that? I'll Russell. do that, Dara. <laughs> Nation. So, um, I love street protesters, they're fantastic. The best I saw, there's a lovely old lady who, since the war in Iraq started, she stands outside the Bristol Hippodrome with a big sign that says, Toot if you're anti war. And if you drive past her, go, she does this. Now, I'm not sure, I've made her leap many times. I, I don't know if I'm anti war or really pro pensioner leaping. You know, when you're kind of like, why am I doing this? Ha, stop it! Ha, do it! <laughs> They're everywhere. They're brilliant. There's, there was a bloke uh, that I saw the other day, you know, one of those religious god botherers. It's fantastic. Just with a loud hailer, just pointing at people around. And, you're going to hell. You're going to hell. You're going to hell. Everyone was freaked out. Too goth delighted. That's a separate issue. But <laughs> he pointed at me and I was freaked out. And then he did something wonderful. He pointed at this really strutting black guy. I don't know why the fact that he's black made it cooler, but it really did, right? Pointed at it, went, you're going to hell. Without missing a beat, this bloke just went, no, mate. HMV. And he just sat there going, Okay, let's spin the wheel again. The subject is extreme fundamentalism. Ian. Uh, you're, you're saying extreme fundamentalism? Yeah, yeah, the fundamentalism on a skateboard. If you could do that, that'd be great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, well, it's, it's, uh, it's basically uh, extreme fundamentalists burning uh, American flags. Uh, uh, where do they get them, by the way? <laughs> 
Where do they get them? We don't see it, you know. As soon as they turn the cameras off, someone's there going, put it out, for goodness sake. <laughs> I've only got two left. <laughs> Use the asbestos flag, like I said. <laughs> I, th I think some, uh, some Jewish bloke's got a big warehouse in the Middle East, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, business is business. <laughs> Well done, Ian Stone. <laughs> that leaves us with Frankie and Andy. The next topic is... Political correctness. Who would like to go... Frankie! <laughs> <laughs> now, political correctness has changed everything. People forget that even political correctness itself used to be called spastic gay talk. <laughs> it's not... It's not politically correct to say don't give money to charity. I mean, we, we might want to give money to Africa, but money takes no account of cultural difference or the reality of those people's lives. If you give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. If you give him a fishing rod, he'll break it up for firewood. <laughs> I'll swap it for a fish. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Right. Okay, Andy, let's see what you've been left with. It's help. Away you go. <laughs> now, once again, they've been having a go this week, haven't they, about uh, skinny models saying that they give us a bad body image. Now, I'm not sure we're quite that insecure, are we? You know, I see a skinny model, I don't think, oh, I'd better go on a diet. I think, oh, there's a skinny model, I bet they're hungry. <laughs> I think I'll have a pie. <laughs> and at the end of that round, points for both teams. Give it for both teams. This round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. Ian, which category would you like? Uh, I'll have crime, please. Okay, your category is crime. The answer is gun runners, robbers and murderers. What is the question? Is it, uh, what is the largest entry in the Baghdad Yellow Pages? <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it, what was the less successful follow-up to shares, gypsies, tramps and thieves? <laughs> Is it, according to the Daily Mail, how should we <coughs> categorise asylum seekers? Is it just... Uh, is it... War, what is it good for? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is a matter, I'll give you a clue, it's a matter of records. Oh, it's the Home Office thing then, isn't it? It is the Home Office thing, yeah. yeah. Is it... What offences had been committed by British people abroad but then hadn't been registered on the database <laughs> in the UK. That's very good. Yeah. That's very good. Yeah. The, um, the question I was looking for was, what kind of convicted criminals were missing from the police records after a Home Office bungle? This is the news that the Home Office have failed to update police records of Britons convicted abroad, leaving the perpetrators free to apply for jobs in Britain, which I presume you're actually always free to apply. You can apply, for God's sake. I am a murderer. May I work in your school? Well, no, but you can apply, yeah. <laughs> This is a joke, you know, because, OK, you know, being a government is difficult, right? So there's difficult things in government. It might be hard to find a line between individual freedom and collective responsibility. They're messing up on data entry. <laughs> Apparently one in five of our records are wrong. And if the Home Office says it's one in five, it's probably about three quarters. <laughs> <laughs> it's also slightly vague the term Britons who have offended abroad. But it's <laughs> presumably that includes people who've gone, Oi, Manuel, give us another beer, por favor, yeah. uh, in, in Greece. <laughs> now, whose fault it is? It's John Reed, or as yeah. he's listed on the database, John Reeves. <laughs> <laughs> I hate John Reed. He looks like a bouncer at a bowling oh, club. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he's, he's, he's had so many scares. There have been three or four, haven't they? 
Yeah, but, the, but it's not surprising because the police are, you know, the police are trying to do a good job, but they're a bit rubbish. I've only ever once been a, a victim of crime, which is when a flat I lived in was broken into. Dun dun dun. And uh, I came home one day, and the door had been knocked off its hinges. It was just splinters. And a policeman came literally, round. They literally took it the, and then they, ch and then no. they shredded no, it. No, they didn't. They just... <laughs> As the policeman came round, I was standing in front of this door, which was half there, right? And the policeman had his notebook, and he went, So, sir, any idea how they got in? <laughs> One of, the, one of the they problems... came in over the balcony, you twonk. <laughs> <laughs> one of the problems that they had, wasn't it, was last week's Home Office problem, was apparently people absconding yeah. from open prisons. Now, I guess the problem there is the word open next to the word <laughs> prisons. <laughs> <laughs> I would have thought. It is, it is, it is not I mean, yeah. Not only should you be allowed access to your own records, you should be allowed access to your own CCTV footage so that you can find out what you did on a Friday night. <laughs> I shagged someone. <laughs> the great thing, the new CCTV footage, right? You can actually, they can actually speak to people as well as see them, they can speak to them and they're apparently going to use this to stop people littering. What a brilliant job that would be. You know, you're there. Oi, pick it up. <laughs> Hoodie board, this is God. <laughs> <laughs> On a uh, possibly more serious note, uh, what does everyone think of the Big Brother race route? I love the way that the viewing figures have gone up the ever since the race. Yeah. People yeah. do love to tune in for a bit of racism. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I'm going to get minute. offended. I'd better have a watch of this one. Here and, we go. And Big Brother, it, the producers are deliberately doing this. You know, they may as well just have the voiceover guy going, Dear three, Jeard is a bigot. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't the thing that basically we are at fault because as a viewing public we have over promoted Jade Goody yeah I mean there's yeah. no point saying she's at fault because she's not fit to take any place in a civilized society we're in the same situation as someone who's trained a monkey to be a butler <laughs> and saying, oh I trained him to be a butler and instead of ironing my shirts you know what he's doing he's throwing shit at the walls <laughs> He's throwing shit at the walls because he's a monkey. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very powerful yeah. metaphor. How great yeah. yeah. would it be if someone's just turned on at that moment with you? He's throwing shit at the wall because he's a monkey. <laughs> what, what's coming well, next? No, too much racism. They're oh, no, talking about Jade Goody again. Yeah. <laughs> Plus we've, we've, you know, allowed Jade Goody's mum to have na national television. If I was Jade Goody's mum, I would not be on TV. The only reality TV show I go on would be celebrities get sterilised for the good of the country. <laughs> Well, Surely, by the way, the, it took a slightly more serious turn, I suppose, in the sense that uh, we're now at war with India. <laughs> uh, that's <laughs> what, uh, yeah. what, what, what we're not, but the makers of, of Big Brother are. Our so basically, company. Channel 4 and Endemol, the production company, are now, they're, they're right, they burnt effigies uh, saying uh, death to the makers of Big Brother, which is fantastic. Not is that right? Death yeah, to yeah, the makers right. of Big Brother. Well, yeah, which is, which, and and, and, they, and they, can, they can attack, presumably, on, on who knows when these people are going to appear, like at what episode of Deal or No Deal, yeah, exactly. another programme made. <laughs> by Endemol, they're going to go, what's in the box? Oh, it's a load of Indian men, really angry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Channel 4, <laughs> I would have made deal, deal no better, wouldn't it? It, it, it would introduce a genuine it. note of peril. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. If you're going, the box may contain a penny, or it may contain 50 grand, or it may contain the Tamil Tigers. One or two. <laughs> Who knows who's going to be in the box? Surely Channel 4 are going to be absolutely <laughs> delighted that India is paying attention. It's going to be the biggest Channel 4 audience they've ever had, isn't it? It's gone from three and a half million to four and a half million. Soon, you know, one billion, <laughs> one hundred thousand. Yeah. And you know that next year they're going to have in the house Ron Atkinson, that ballerina. Yeah. yeah. Nick Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> and the Kumars. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> In one house together at last, yeah. it'd be great. And Prince see... Philip, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Gordon Brown is currently he's on tour there. in India, yeah. wanting to talk about finance. Now his first question is, what do you think of Big Brother? He wouldn't have a clue, Dirk. He's, he's, he's forced really. to say, um, I think it's seriously damaged this country standing in India. <laughs> Before, they just thought that we stole their country and made them drink tea. <laughs> <laughs> now we're the bad guys, suddenly. <laughs> 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 Within the rules of the show, though, you know that they have no contact with the outside world bar yeah. the diary yeah. room, so they don't actually know this stuff. If they just all sat them down uh, and said, OK, let's have a look at what's going on in the world, and then showed them, like, live footage <laughs> of, of, of some part of, like, Delhi erupting in flames <laughs> and Jane Goody <laughs> being burnt <laughs> by a giant crowd. <laughs> 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 Imagine. It'd be
can you imagine though? Imagine the next time Jay Goody goes for a curry. Imagine being in that curry house. How fantastic would that be? I, I think be, imagine being in the kitchen of the curry yeah, house exactly. when the order comes. <laughs> <laughs> on one of the evictions, they should have someone go out and just have complete silence in the house and yeah. then a single gunshot. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the end of that round is in the point to Ian, Hugh and Frankie. <laughs> now we come to our final quickfire round called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone, so if you can all make your way over to the performance area, please. I call it ideas for scenarios. We'd love to see and the performers come in with their suggestions. The first subject is unlikely lines to find in the Bible. <laughs> he's not the Messiah. He's a very naughty boy. <laughs> and God said, let there be light. Sponsored by PowerJet. <laughs> A man who lies with another man should be stoned. It helps. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> a long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> and God said, right, that's the 14 commandments. Now, will you remember all those? <laughs> <laughs> that's very good. <laughs> Table for 12, Jesus. I, I can do two sixes at 8.30. <laughs> And on the eighth day, God created a magic talking leopard and forgot all about us. <laughs> <laughs> and Mary said God had given her a child, so Joseph went and joined Fathers for Justice. <laughs> and it rained for 40 days and 40 nights, although Thames Water still had a hosepipe ban. <laughs> St. Paul's third epistle to the Corinthians. Dear Corinthians, I've written to you twice now. No reply. I don't know how you do things in Corinth, but where I'm from, that's a bit rude. <laughs> OK. The next topic is... In the week in which the government discussed raising the school leaving age, bad things for a teacher to say. Fight! 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 <laughs> You know the rules, Thomas. If you forget your PE kit, I take the lesson in my pants. <laughs> I'm a gun runner, robber and murderer, but the Home Office think I'm clean. <laughs> Are you chewing, boy? This is the worst blowjob I've had all day. I don't know the answer, Watkins. I just do this job for the holidays. <laughs> it turns out you're not dyslexic, you're just really, really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I have been at this school for over 40 years. I buggered your fathers and I will bugger you. <laughs> <laughs> OK. At the end of that, ladies and gentlemen, the winners are Ian, Hugh and Frankie. That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Ian Stone. <laughs> Commiserations to Andy Parsons, Mark Watson and Russell Howard. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Good night. Mock the Week next Thursday at the same time. Tomorrow at 10 here on BBC Two, Nigel Habers reveals what he'd like to send to Room 101. And on BBC Three now, the toughest challenge yet for the teenage couples in Baby Bottles.